Well, we just heard a lot about uh, Kang's childhood history, but there are a few other elements that I'm going to ask him to talk about. Uh, would you, Kang, talk about how the the government program of putting people together to to breed children and how that's your parents were involved in that, and then your experiences in the orphanage and how your grandmother was able to protect you a little bit? Yeah, I mean, the, uh, Pol Pot, his dream is to create a clean society you know, put everything and everyone under his control. But to make this happen, everyone has to be executed. Because those people, they have gone through many different society and have been educated, they would not listen to him. Right. But who can change this? The kids. So in uh, 77, that's when he started his, they call the human breeding program. It's forced people to live together. Uh, the man with this woman, the boys with this girl, they all have to make babies. So this is how my parents met. My so father, these are people that don't know each other. That yeah, are just I mean, it, put together it, for the sole purpose yeah. of breeding children. Yeah, you wouldn't imagine. So you know, you have to do it, and and you haven't met this person before, and they put them together. My father came from the eastern part of Cambodia. My mother came from Siem Reap. So they were put together. My father is Chinese, actually. Yes, he's Chinese, and my mother is Cambodian. And then they were forced to live together to make baby, and they had my sister, and they had me. So a newborn baby uh, is taken straight away from their parents and sent to the camp. And they all live together there. But luckily they gave a job to my grandmother to work as a house mother to take care of all the babies. And she identified me and my sister. So the day the revolution collapsed, she took us and ran. So for the first five years I was with my, I was with my grand. Um, mother. I don't, call, I don't call her grandmother, I call her mother. Mm. Um, so, yeah, but um, the people who knew my stories, it's a little funny uh, because I'm the only black person in the family. You're so a black all, person. Yeah, only black, you know, my sister is white, my father, my mother, my grandmother. So the people who knew my stories, they, they always said to me, it's kind of teasing, you know, you're probably not this part of the family. Probably your grandmother took a wrong child. <laughs> because of my skin colors. Yeah. So this is what happened. Uh, but you know the day the revol revolution fall, the first thing that people had to deal with was about this. Um, should they remain together or should they break up? Because some of these people they forced to do it and then they had a husband and wife already. How long had they been together, do you think? You know, several years. Several years. And so uh, a question from my father to my mother were you single and the answers came out she was single and my father claimed himself he was single too why don't we live together and they, yeah they ending up living together until today um, but some couples you know they already married they had husband and wife so when the answers came out they already had a husband they already had a wife so they would break up and go back to find a family member yeah. and they didn't even care about the child in the camps or they can't find them because at you know when they're the revolution collapsed, it was kind of messy, you know, everything. Uh, now the communist people, they mess up everything, they mess up life of people, they mess up you know, the whole thing. So does that mean that there's a lot of people of your generation who don't know who their parents are? Yeah, a lot of them, and, and, but they were taken to the government orphanage. And a lot of these people, a lot of these kids, they, they have never found their parents, but they were adopted later on by some Westerners and local. And because in the 1975, the beginning of the revolution, they broke the peoples up. The you know, husband has to go with the husband, the wife with the wife, the boy with the boy, the girl with the girl, to prevent from the uprisings against the regime. So, but then when they started the second program, the human breeding one, they had no time to find a husband and wife and boyfriends and girlfriends, uh, put them together. So just chose whoever. So, yeah. But, you know, I was lucky that finally I met my parents and um, they, they were together. So. so did they get married then in the end? Not married, you know, just lived together. Just lived together. They still just, just lived, lived together. together. Yeah. Okay. So how were you, what's the story of you being reunited with them? How, how did that happen? The transition from your grandmother raising you to meeting your parents again and all being back together? So uh, I... I was taken by my grandmother to the hometown 
So we arrived there, arrived there earlier, earlier than my mother. And so because I was taken straight away into the camp, and then my, my father and my mother, they split them up. They split them up and they all have to go back to work in the rice fields as a team, you know, because I said earlier, as I said earlier, that the man has to go with the man and the woman with the woman. So the rule is, if they work hard enough, they would allow them to see each other once every six months. Not only if they work hard enough. Mm. So when the, the day the revolution collapsed, they all walk back into the hometown. The people, you know, remember where did they come from before the revolution, so they would walk all the way back into the hometown. And people were exhausted uh, to walk because they, they knew that they had to walk, you know, 100 kilometers away, 200 kilometers away. Or they were too exhausted from the earlier days, you know, working hard in the rice field during the revolution. But somehow they had to do it, walk for this long distance into the hometown to see or to wait for the family member to be turned out. But people expect, you know, on the trip back to the hometown, expect to see their family member there, waiting for them, or to see their home, you know, still there. But when they arrived in their hometown, when they arrived in the city, it was no longer as before. The city was not like a city. The buildings have been completely knocked down. A lot of people could not even identify their, their home. Mm -hmm. And so, let's say, you know, the mother came into the hometown and she arrived there first, but because the home was not there. So she can't stand there all day or all month. So she has to find somewhere to sleep. She ran there, find somewhere to sleep there. And then the kids turn up there again. Nowhere to go, no room to sleep, has to go there to find somewhere to sleep. So you can see, you can see they separated. And so then they have to go around every day and find out from the people uh, about the news of their family member. So, like I ran that way to find where, where did you see my father? And or my father would have to go that way, did you see my son? Because we can't be here because it's just the empty space. The house is knocked down. So kids are running around to find each other. Everyone did the same thing. You know, and it, it took us such a long time to meet. That's what I said, you know, five years to find all the family members. Mm -hmm. So, but not all of them turned up. In these five years, I only found my, you know, found, I found my mother, I found my father. And I found my aunties, but my uncles never came. So it's confirmed after five years we lost four. My grandfather and my uncles and my cousin. Four. So they were probably killed in the war and fighting at some point. Yes, and, and only one of my uncle, we knew about him. Before the revolution, he could manage to leave Cambodia into Thailand. But because of the propaganda movies, the Khmer Rouge, they filmed the propaganda movies every year and they put it on the TV channel and broadcasting to the Western world. He saw that propaganda movie and he came back in. Um, so then he disappeared. Yeah. So he must be taken to be killed. Yeah. All right. So I do appreciate you sharing this personal part of your story. And I, I just want to say again, this is what we travel for. You know, this is so foreign to our experience as Americans, but it's so good for us to meet someone like you that's lived through a revolution, communist rule, war, and has come out on the other side and, and built such a great life for yourself. So thanks for sharing. Thanks for being there Thank for my you. group. Thank you. Thank you. Akun. Akun. Akun.